A unique but common application of centrifugal pumps is boiler feed water, feeding water into a boiler. Hi, I'm Doug Kriebel and I'm here to discuss boiler feed water pumps in general. Boilers can range from 100 PSIG for general steam heating to over 500 PSIG for process steam. 1700 PSIG for combined cycle power plants, 2400 PSIG for coal-fired power plants, and over 3000 PSIG for supercritical boilers. This is a sketch of a typical boiler feed water system. Condensate and makeup water are pumped into the deaerator, which removes oxygen, CO2, and other non-condensable gases. It has a storage tank which provides suction for the boiler feed water pump, which in turn feeds water into the boiler. Despite the wide range of pressures, all boiler feed water pumps have certain parameters in common. High pressure discharge, high suction temperature, low NPSH available, need to operate over a wide range of flows, high horsepower and the need to be efficient and because they're integral to the operation of the boiler they must be extremely reliable. Let's look at each parameter. High pressure. Obviously the pump must supply enough pressure to enter the boiler including pressure losses through the control valve, through any heat exchangers such as feed water heaters and economizers, plus the static head from the pump to the boiler entrance. To meet codes, it's usually necessary to ensure enough pressure to maintain flow while the relief valves are relieving. For these reasons, boiler feed pumps are usually multi-stage. High temperature on the suction is from the deaerator, and for most industrial boilers, this is 228 degrees Fahrenheit. Higher pressure boilers may have deaerators operating at higher temperatures. This can be an issue for the seals and bearings. Since the pump is taking suction from a deaerator, which uses steam to bring the water to its boiling point, the only NPSHA is the static head minus suction friction losses. Therefore, NPSHA is usually low, just the height of the deaerator minus friction. This condition will limit the flow rate for the pump, especially on runout. Meeting low NPSHA is a challenge. Controlling flow over a wide range is important since the pump must accommodate all flows required by the boiler demand. The pump is usually controlled by drum level in the boiler and must respond quickly. Since the pump must operate over flow rates from high to very low, there must be enough NPSHA for the maximum flow and you must also protect the pump at minimum flow. Every pump has a minimum flow and must never go below it. This sketch shows two common methods. One uses an orifice to continuously recirculate the minimum flow back to the deaerator. This is okay for smaller pumps. The minimum flow is added to the design flow and recirculates all the time. This means you are paying for the additional horsepower to pump this additional flow all the time. In larger pumps, this is costly and an automatic modulating recirc valve is usually specified. As the flow is decreased to the minimum, the valve automatically begins to open and bypass additional flow to always maintain the minimum flow. The hydraulic conditions for boiler feed service result in high horsepowers and therefore attention to pump efficiency is important. You should check to make sure that you have selected an efficient pump operating at a high efficiency point. There can be trade-offs between first cost and operating costs. Since the operation of the boiler depends on the pump, it's important to make sure that you have selected a reliable pump. Study up. This is not a little pump, so some effort should go into it and research beforehand could save money later. Living with a poor performer is not easy. You may wish to consider a replacement or living with a high maintenance pump. Let's look at typical designs for these pressure ranges. Lower pressure boilers under 500 PSIG are usually handled by either a vertical or horizontal multi-stage pump. 
under 100 PSI G could be handled in a lower cost single stage pump, but resist this temptation. The hydraulics, efficiency, and reliability could be compromised. These pumps are usually under 500 horsepower. Medium pressures, say 500 to 2000 PSI G, are usually handled by either horizontal ring section pumps or horizontal split case multi-stage pumps and could be from 500 to 4000 horsepower. Higher pressures over 2000 PSI G can be heavy duty horizontal split case ring sections or barrel pumps. These are usually over 4000 horsepower and larger horsepowers are sometimes turbine driven. Each of these designs have proven track records, but careful evaluation will help you determine the best selection for your application. Be prudent and rely on a supplier who has a lot of experience in this demanding duty. We know this information will be helpful, but if you have any questions, we are here for you.